<laughs> so this 100x oil objective has um, a special feature that you need to be aware of otherwise it will be a little frustrating at times. Um, you see the distance the piston sticks out right there? Mm -hmm. If I push in and rotate slightly, you see how it's not as out as much now? Yeah. So that's in, out, in, yeah. out. So the way, or the reason it was designed that way is sometimes people have multiple oil objectives on their microscope and they may not want to uh, get all objectives uh, oiled at the same time. I mean, if you have a 40 oil and a 60 oil and a 100 oil, Maybe you just want to use the 40 and the 100, but not the 60. So the 60, you could retract like that and then move between the 40 and the 100, and the oil on your specimen wouldn't get on the objective. So there's actually a reason for that. But where people get frustrated is is that um, they forget this or their rep never tells them about that feature, and then they you know clean it with tissue paper after using it, and then it gets retracted, and they don't notice that. And the next time they go to use it, they say, Gee, I have to refocus a whole lot. Oh, okay. Because they're having yeah. to overcome Machine. that distance change. So if you ever notice that when you go from 40 to 100, now you have to refocus just a little bit, maybe half a turn or, or so. But if you're noticing that you're having to refocus a whole lot, just make sure that piston is okay, out, like, out like that. So, okay. So I'm going to put that guy in there and. You know, this is something you should probably never have to do as far as, you know, remove objectives and put them in, but it's very simple. And then I'll just... Uh, so this is also dust kit, right? Do I'm sorry? This is a dust kit? Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'll... If I can get this... This is kind of cross-threaded a little bit. I can't really screw it on very well. So, okay. All right. So, and then, of course, with this came some immersion oil and lens paper so uh, immersion oil do you have a pair of scissors um it's in that box oh I'll, I'll get it so when you get these you just cut just a little off the tip Sorry. and then when you want to uh, go to your to your 100x oil, you can just put a drop or two on, right on the top of the objective. Now you don't want to put a whole bunch because you don't want it like running off the sides and down in the, it, and down into the objective. So just keep that in mind. So okay. So do you guys need instructions on both microscopes or just one or the other or mm, both? But so Connor can also say we want to change the filter. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll do that. So um, let me just give you a quick overview of instructions on both microscopes. So this microscope can do phase contrast as well as bright field and fluorescence. When you're doing bright field, meaning you don't want the phase rings in place, this condenser needs to go to this position. Okay. You know, open. When you want to do phase contrast, you need the condenser to be in this position. You don't have a phase four, uh, a four X objective. The forex objective you have is simply bright field, so it won't do anything with, with that phase ring. So you'll either be in this position or this position. For the fluorescence, which one you say? For fluorescence, doesn't make any difference because fluorescence, mm -hmm. uh, it's coming in the back. Ooh, speaking of which, that's bad. I'll talk about that in a minute. Fluorescence lights coming in the back, going to the, you know, through the objective to the sample, and then back down. So it never. This is for transmitted light only. Okay. For bright field and phase contrast, this for fluorescence doesn't make any difference what position this is in. Okay. So, so that's the position we want for phase. That's bright field. And again, fluorescence doesn't. What is the last one? Uh, this one is for if you have a four X objective. Oh, four But you don't. Okay. But you don't have a four X phase objective. You have a four X bright field objective. Okay. But it doesn't have a phase annulus in it. So. Okay. So that's so you won't be using that position. So just these two. And then this is uh, condenser aperture. Uh, keep that kind of in the center. Um, the bulbs in here, if you ever need to change it. Um, now, one thing I just noticed back here, this is big no-no, and it's going to affect your uh, fluorescence performance. And that is, you see how crimped this is? Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want this liquid light guide getting crimped. Okay. Uh, somebody pushed it right up against there, so. 
uh, it's probably not going to be, and I'll, I'll show you that in a minute, it's probably not going to be um, an optimal uh, image now that that's been bent like that. But you definitely want to be careful not to put a strong, sharp bend in that because that's filled with the gel and when it gets crimped really tightly like it was, sometimes it gets bubbles in there and once you get a bubble it's, it's no good. So, I mean it'll work but it won't be even illumination. You'll see areas that uh, when you look in the microscope you'll see areas that are kind of bright and areas that are kind of dim. So, okay so turn this guy on. Here's the, the power on switch down here and let's just go to say uh, 10x. And here's our specimen thing. Now there's a concave side on this. That's the side you want down. You want the top side to be flat and the concave down. That way as you move objectives it won't hit. Um, so I'll put that in place there. So yeah, so it's flat. You see it's flat there, but on this side it's concave. Okay, concave. Yeah. So that just gives the objective some room to turn. Okay, so coarse and, and fine focus uh, on each side. And then typically you always want to start focus at either 4x or 10x. Makes it much easier to find your specimen and then move up to 20 or 40 or 100 oil. Never try to start on 100 oil because you'll make yourself crazy trying to find your sample. Um, on this side over here, there is uh, the selector for the camera or the uh, binocular tube. This one? So, so this guy right here. Okay. So, so it's an either or. So when you have it in the photo port, it'll go 100% to the camera. When you have it binocular, it'll go 100% to the observation. So just be aware of that. One other thing too is on these eyepieces, they have a zero mark. And you need to keep these eyepieces set on zero So since you have a camera. Because what will happen is if you keep it on zero and get it in focus to your eyes, when you switch to the camera, it'll be in focus on the camera. If you turn these all the way in, then when you, go, when you have it in focus to your eyes and flip to the camera, you'll have to refocus again because it won't be in focus to the camera. So keep these guys on zero. So you can and keep the, in, in the zero. In that mm -hmm. case, that means you can switch from the uh, camera and the... Uh, and microscope and not have to refocus. Because okay. the camera will be par focal with the microscope in that position. Okay. Now, uh, as was mentioned before, um, this system does have fluorescence, and um, I'm going to see if there's a filter cube in here on this side. So it holds two filter cubes. So I'm going to undo this little guy here, open that up, and then remove this knob. And this side does have a filter cube in it, so let's see what this is. So to do that, I simply remove the tool, and then I screw it back into the filter cube, and I pull it out. And that shouldn't happen. Oh boy, that's come off the bottom here. Okay, we'll address that in a minute. That's the um, emission filter that's come off. Um, so, oh, don't 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 touch that with your fingers. Yeah, I mean, you can touch it the sides, but yeah, don't put a fingerprint on. Yeah. So. Okay. So, with a uh, fluorescence filter cube, uh, in fact, you can see this has been used quite a bit. You see kind of the discoloration in the center there? Mm -hmm. um, so I this guess it has never been used to the fluorescence, right? I don't uh, remember. Yeah. So, this is um, a B2A filter. This is a um, blue excitation green emission filter. And on the emission side, it has a very broad, very long emission. I think you got a specific GFP. Um, let's see. Right. There's the, okay, there's the GFP actually you're ordering now. But oh, okay, yeah. So. And you have probably FITC. We have currently you have FITC. Right. Yeah. This is the um, um, this is the Fitzy filter. So this is different than a than a B2A filter. Um, So, let me. This is FITC? Yeah, this is FITC. Yeah, B2EC. Okay. It's FITC. And then there'll be a um, G 2EC. That'll be a Tritzy filter. I think I quoted that. Okay, so this has to go. 
Is it broken yet? Um, well, it's it's come out of the uh, come out of there. Let me take out the other one on the other side and see what it looks like. So it can have like uh, three or four filters at a time. Two, two only two filters, filters one on each side. Emission filter hasn't come off on this one too. Oh boy. Is it going the other way? No, it, it comes out this way. But we may try the other direction if I can't get this to. Uh, I don't. Well, actually, I can't. You can't go the other direction mm -hmm. like this. Second, this was the yeah, that no, was fine. Okay, so this is gonna go here. The other way, probably. Um, yeah, I think you're right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's where that piece came from, right there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that looks like that's turned about the same. What I would do, um, they have, uh, you can have some, uh, uh, a product called like JB Weld, or are you familiar with that? Mm -hmm. I would take some of that and just very gently put some in the edge there. Obviously, you don't want it getting on the optical surface there, but do that. That way, that it'll lock it in place and it won't come out. But uh, I don't think you're going to be using this B2A filter that much in the future anyway now that you've got the, the Fitzy, which is much more uh, specific. But um, at least this way. Um, so this one is the blue one? Yeah, this is, this is a called a blue filter. Mm -hmm. People typically call them the color filter based on their excitation, you know, the light you see coming through. Okay. So this is called uh, a, a blue filter, and it's a green excitation. This is a blue filter as well, the Fitzy filter, but it's much more narrow, and it's uh, banned. And if somebody will send me an email, I'll send you links to, to all the spectrums for all these different filter cues. Okay. Um, and then you can kind of compare and see which one is more appropriate for what you'll be using. So, so I'm going to uh, leave that guy out. So typically, uh, people do put their... Um, and this is a um, UV excitation uh, UV. Uh, so it's UV excitation and it's blue emission. So typically when you're looking at DAP, DAPI like a nuclear stain, this is the, the filter cube you'll use. So in inserting these guys, what you'll notice is you see on the microscope there how it has a dovetail. Oh, yeah. And it, it matches the dovetail here. So you want the uh, excitation, uh, excuse me, the excitation filter is here, but you want the, um, let's see, this, this is the emission filter here on the bottom. So the emission filter goes in the bottom. The excitation filter, of course, points to the uh, light source. And we're painting that again. So um, it might be good to relocate that light source down here a little closer or maybe this can just this be one? yeah well we'll Let's leave it there it. for now but maybe you can move the microscope a little closer to it okay. 
Okay. So to put this back in, I'm going to um, screw this little handle into this guy. Then I'm going to fit this over the dovetail. And never try to ram it in, just kind of like lightly jiggle and then it, it goes in. So uh, one of the things you want to keep in mind in, when you're working on a microscope is never force anything. Uh, it should either fit or that you're doing something wrong or just wiggle it a little like I did. Mm -hmm. um, forcing something never fixes anything on a microscope. You just wind up breaking something. Um, so then once you have that uh, in place, you can put this little cover back on. And then I need to find one of these little... Oh, here's my, my screw over here. This little thumb screw goes here. And that just tightens the lid there. And then you can insert this guy back through the hole here. And sometimes it's a little tricky to find. So I'm going to use this cube on this side. So I'm going to put the Fitzy filter in place. Um, and then it goes on the dovetail there. So I'm kind of using that to push this one back to the other side here. Because they work well some reason that's not working the way it should. So they kind of um, work kind of like in, a, in opposing fashion. You can have them both pulled out or if you push one in then when you push the other one in it pushes the other one back out. So does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Okay. So because uh, obviously you can only have one in the light path at one time. Um, but it's not quite working like it should. Let's see. So that's the way it should work. So when this one's out, mm -hmm. uh, well, out there, uh, this one's in, and when this one, well, that one's not there. Okay. That's not quite all the way in. So so you cannot see the two color at a time? No, um, you would have to have a, um, you, you can get a dual, a dual band filter that's like Dappy and Fitzy, or you can get even a triple, which is Dappy, Fitzy, and Tritzy. Mm -hmm. You can get, you know, cubes that have that um, all at once, but these are all single band. So what is the, I mean, what is the price difference between these now? Um, the single bands are typically like, 1100 the dual bands are like 1500 and the triple bands are like 2000 um, okay. so what people typically do is they will capture a DAPI and then they'll capture uh, say a Fitzy image you'll have two separate images and of course you know the nuclear stain is going to be different than the Fitzy stain and then they'll overlay the images on top of each other so you'll see an image where you have both DAPI and Fitzy Okay. Uh, overlaid on top of each. So you'll see in your image, you'll see blue and green on top of each other. So you can do that? I mean, you yeah, can... I'll show you that in the software. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, this uh, this microscope, I think, uh, probably needs a little bit of service because the um, the mechanism, I think it needs to be lubricated and cleaned, probably taken off and cleaned and lubricated. But But you'll know you'll have the cubes in the right position when I push this one all the way in. Mm -hmm. And you see how this is still not quite to the end mm -hmm. here. You can, you know, it's about a half an inch there. Mm -hmm. And the same thing is true on this side. You see how that's recessed about a half an inch. Mm -hmm. So now uh, I know I have those all in the right position. Uh, and then if I pull them out uh, like that, then, then there are no cubes in the, in the light path at this point. Okay, so now that I've got those where they should be, I'm going to put the covers on. Can you send me that uh, dual filter uh, code? Okay, which colors would you like? Uh, like uh, green and blue. Okay. FITC and probably GFP. You know, 
they're not used very often because with the I mean uh, because the only time you really need the, the dual band is when you want to see it to your eyes. You can always capture dual to the screen and I'll show you that okay. um, using single cubes but the only time you need a dual band cube is when you want to see it to your eyes, see both colors at the same time to your eyes. Because so, my application is has like a different protein at 